Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I want to talk about some tips for the Path of Ascension that I wish I had known when I started. Definitely could have saved me some time. Path of Ascension is the Kyrian Covenant activity, and I think it's worth doing because there is some exclusive transmog mounts, pets tied to doing it. There's also some other fun quality of life buffs. You can get your steward a mail pouch, for example, that's kind of cute. If you're new to Path of Ascension, I would summarize it as single player, challenging vehicle combat. Like, kind of imagine the Brawler's Guild, but with vehicles. This is also how you get the Sky Strider Glider item. You can craft those using Path of Ascension crafting and then use them to pull the Sundancer rare for the mount. Uh, you can sell them and craft as many as you like to sell, so that's not a bad way to make gold. The very short version of how the whole system works is you invest in a building, do quests to recruit fights, beat the fights to unlock stuff that helps you get more fights and then stuff to beat them with, and then get extra goodies along the way. The Wowhead page in Path of Ascension has tables with the various rewards in case you want to read ahead and see what's waiting. The thing that I had my eye on was this dark wing transmog from the Master of the Path achievement at the very end. Next, on to the tips. First up, do not get discouraged when you lose the first fight. You are supposed to. This is Blizzard's brilliant way of showing you how important equipment is. You lose to Callisthene, they get you to make the Herald's footpads, and then you use those to beat her. That first loss happens to everybody, it's not you, don't sweat it. Similarly, don't get discouraged by the memory fetching quests. They make you run all over the place early in Path of Ascension to recruit the different memories to fight. There are 10 fights in total, and once you've recruited all of them, you are done. You never need to do that again. The same goes for crafting these six different pieces of equipment. Once you have made each one, you have them forever. You never need to make them again. Uh, charms are consumed, but equipment is not. A lot of the grindy running around work of Path of Ascension is front-loaded, and you won't need to worry about it after a certain point. Next, and this one was life-changing, you can buy caches of the crafting mats, the feathers and champions pelts and whatever. You're going to need a lot of them to make the equipment and eventually to make a lot of charms. The innkeeper NPC down by the Path of Ascension stuff, you're looking for Caretaker Karen, she sells a box for five medallions that contains a ton of stuff, like 20 of each thing. That is drastically faster than farming the stuff independently. Life is just too short to grind champions pelts. Next, something that I got a fair bit of use out of, you can practice fights on the PTR. If you are nervous about spending medallions of service working on fights that you know you can't quite beat yet, you don't have to spend your for real medallions. Anybody can play the public test realm. You can opt into it and download it. You don't need to be selected like a beta or anything. You can copy your character with your stash of medallions over and then work on the fights there. A uh, quick note about the current PTR, you may have this bug where you just see sky. All you have to do is re-log and that goes away. Many of the Path of Ascension encounters are just hard, and even when you know the strategy, you just need to practice. Doing that on the public test realm means that you can try the fights without spending your for real medallion. Just be aware that when you do win, it won't count until you do it on live servers. Things can be a little scuffed on public test realm, so it's not perfect, and it's not always available, but when it is, this is a nice way to practice the fights without aggravating your medallion of service anxiety, if you have that. I know I did. Moving on, another quick one. You can skip the intro cutscene before each fight with escape. After you click the bell, I just mash escape to get back in there. Their life is too short to look at your doom for too long. Speaking of medallions of service, let's talk about those for a minute. They are of course required for entry, and they can also be used to buy the crafting mats as we've seen. So you're going to need to farm them. Uh, the bulk of them comes from, I would say, the mission table. You get these missions for four medallions. Sometimes from Bastion Callings, you'll get a couple of them there. And then Bastion Paragon Supplies tend to have a bunch of them. Now, you can just farm these. They come from treasures, but they also have a chance to drop from Elite for Sworn Mobs. So if you are desperate and you've already looted your treasures for the day and you're caught up in all the other stuff, you can go farm Elite for Sworns to try to grind Medallions of Service. I have never done that. I, I just, <laughs> I chose the method of just kind of taking it easy, keeping up with Bastion Callings and Treasures and World Quests in the table, and that kind of fed me a regular diet of them. I found that as long as I checked the table and then did this Southern Treasure Chest every day, that one's very fast and kept up with Bastion World Quest for Anima. Um, that kept me on top of medallions more or less. You're gonna need a yacht load of Anima anyways, so most of that does double duty. You're gonna want to be grinding the Anima regardless, so you may as well do Anima activities that give you Bastion rep and medallions because it all, it all gives you more medallions eventually. 
Uh, you can also, uh, later on in Path of Ascension, unlock the ability to use your materials to craft medallions. Kind of the opposite of that vendor, but I would declare that this is not worth it. You could farm the Elite Force Warren a lot faster than you can get this amount of stuff that they're asking for for one medallion. <laughs> nope, wouldn't do it. The moral of the story is if you're getting frustrated and low on medallions, just kind of take a break from Path of Ascension for a while and then just do Bastion World Quest Treasures, Mission Table, and Callings for a bit. Next tip, Renown makes your soul binds stronger, at least according to this NPC. If you are really stuck, you can grind more Renown. If you are Renown capped and you're still really stuck, you could wait for another patch and then grind that Renown. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is my plan for doing Disciple of Humility. I unfortunately do not have any data on how much stronger it makes them, but I will take anything I can get. Next, don't forget about charms. They are effective, but expensive. I would say don't ever bother with the Charm of Discord. It is a negligible amount of damage, kind of a waste. Uh, using charms is going to burn through your materials pretty quickly, so I say practice fights without them, and then pop them when you feel like you're getting really close. Focus, persistence, and quickness are the strongest charms to use in my opinion. I just use these to kind of get me over progression fights that I was stuck on, but keep in mind that there are achievements later on to beat fights on the top difficulty with no charms, so in theory it is doable and you don't have to craft them. Next, speaking of buffs that you gotta turn off for Master of the Path eventually, uh, we've got these braziers. You unlock one of these at rank 3 of the Path of Ascension, like the Sanctum building, and then the other one you get when you upgrade it to rank 5. Each one is going to give your Soulbind 5% health and damage done. Uh, you can turn them on and off just by clicking on them. As long as it is flaming, it is on, and you should have a little buff for that 5% health and damage. You will need to turn them off for Master of the Path if you're doing that achievement for the transmog, but outside of the achievement, make sure that they're burning. You do not need to beat any fights to get those. All you have to do is upgrade the building, so if you want an easier time with the early fights, there is nothing stopping you from just waiting until you've got the building to rank 5, which gives you both braziers and then, you know, 10% health and damage for all of those early fights. That's an option. Next, when you're getting started and when you're in the middle and for most of Path of Ascension, just take Pelagos and then always get his shield buff. So when you use the memories ability, always run through the dude on the right. This is going to be your best move nine times out of 10. At the very top end for achievement fights, you're gonna need to mess with the haste buff and there are times when you wanna use other soul binds, but overall Pelagos is the strongest one and when you're progressing, he is going to be your best bud. Uh, that Pelagos shield is worth taking a closer look at. When you run through that right image, you're gonna get like this minute long buff. That is not your shield, but that is your shield ready to trigger. Taking direct damage is going to turn that into a few seconds of invulnerability. So being mindful of when that pops is important. And another tip in terms of Pelagos' abilities, do not clip the end of his channel. You wanna channel the entire thing. Most of the damage happens at the end. You can really ruin your damage on him by moving before that channel is over. This is easier said than done because there's a lot of stuff to move out of, but you'll find yourself doing a lot more damage once you're comfy with the fights to the point of knowing when you can channel the entire thing. Last, speaking of the fights, each fight has kind of a rhythm to it, so if you are stuck, I recommend first checking the Wowhead comments for that fight to read up on which combo of soulbinded equipment people like to use, and then maybe watch a YouTube video or two to get a feel for like when to use cooldowns and how to position. Um, as an example, Craven Corinth gets a lot easier when you learn to pop his anima orb eating phase by throwing your unleash off to the side, making sure the center of the reticle is in his line of sight, and also making sure that you always have your shield ready for the fan attack since you cannot guarantee a dodge in the last one and that will wipe you. Stuff like that. Don't feel like you have to spend all of your medallions reinventing the wheel in terms of strategies unless that's just what you're in the mood to do. I reached a point where I felt like I knew what the fights were and I knew what all of the stuff did and I still just had to practice before I got that down so don't be too discouraged if you if you if you know everything and you watched all the videos and you still have to pull the fights five or ten or twenty times before you get them down they're just hard and that's not just you it's a really tough mode best of luck in there and have a wonderful wonderful day